Well, hello and welcome to the channel. I'm glad you could join me for this next part of our build. This is part three of our SIG 33 15 centimeter heavy infantry gun by AFE Club. And this will be our painting video. So one of the first things we need to do is go ahead and get all of our parts ready for painting. And as you can see here, I'm going to be using toothpicks uh, for some things. Uh, those are the stabilizer cylinders, I believe, for our elevation and just being able to stick a toothpick right where uh, the strut goes. That'll hold that part. And also for other parts, we're going to use alligator clips. Now I find alligator clips really useful uh, to be able to hold these parts. Uh, one little downside is in some cases we may have to move those uh, positions on the alligator clips to fully get everything painted. But we'll be able to securely hold the parts this way. And for really small parts, I'm just going to make up a little board here. Now this is just a piece of cardboard and I'm using painter's tape. This is the blue uh, painter's tape. It's a little bit more tacky uh, than the purple stuff that I normally use. And as you can see here, I'm just going to roll the ends of it so that the tape will stick uh, right onto the cardboard. And we'll just press down the edges of it and make it nice and tight. And that sticky side up. And then all we got to do is come in and place uh, our small uh, parts on it. Now, I do go ahead and make up a second one of these because we're going to have to flip these parts in order to paint the other side. And we just want to have that ready. Since I'm using acrylic paints in this project, it'll dry real fast. So we'll paint these parts first and then we'll be able to transfer them to the new board. Also, since we have metal parts, I'm going to use Mr. Metal Primer R here. And we're going to go ahead and prime all these uh, PE parts and especially uh, the metal gun barrel, which is turned aluminum. Now this stuff dries really quick, so we need to get it on there. Uh, it dries real thin though, so you don't have to worry about uh, any brush overlaps or uh, uh, brush strokes. And there are a number of uh, the PE parts here, and we're just going to make sure that we get a good coat of our primer on those parts as well. We don't want any paint chipping off later on in the process of weathering, uh, which we can be a little bit of rough uh, on, the, uh, on the model for that. So here I'm just taking a piece of uh, notebook paper, simply cut out with a pair of scissors, and I'm going to roll it up. Well, I think I'm going to roll it up. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Um, Using the tweezers, we can grab the center corner there and just really roll it really tight. Now the purpose behind this is that we will be able to take and insert this right into the bore uh, of the barrel uh, or gun tube and let it expand. And that will protect that metal surface inside from overspray and we won't have to worry about that. So with everything prepared, we're going to go ahead and paint all of these parts with this uh, German Panzer Gray, thin for the airbrush, of course. And that's going to give us our uh, base primer coat here. And as long as we pay special attention to all the little joints and seams and everything, uh, we just want to make sure that we get a, a, a complete coverage on it. That way, when we go to lay our top color coat on, if there's any little areas that are hard to get to, they'll just be uh, a natural shadow. Uh, so that'll kind of help us there. So one of the things that I do, since this is an acrylic paint and it's going on bare plastic, is we're just going to spray a light coat on everything and set that aside and we'll go on to the next parts. And then we'll come back and we'll with our second or even third coat in some cases. Uh, the paint will just go on so much better. So you got to get that first thin coat on first though. And here we're going to go ahead and start with our second coat of the uh, uh, German Panzer Gray. And as you can see it covers a whole lot better uh, since we got that first 
very translucent coat on and then the color is just going to start to really fill in for us. Now I know this is not real exciting but I just wanted you to see how uh, the color really and the paint actually attaches itself really good to that very first coat and we get a good coverage. And here we're just going to peel off our parts and uh, stick them to that uh, second board that we have that we've already prepped. That way uh, we'll be able to coat the, uh, the side that we couldn't really get to because it was <laughs> on the tape. So with everything primed in our uh, Panzer Gray, we're going to be using this German Dark Yellow and we're going to paint uh, everything with that. And paying close attention to all those little areas that are really hard to get to, we're going to hit those first. And then we'll go ahead and give all the parts uh, a good coat of uh, German Dark Yellow. Now when it comes to our wooden crates and everything, I just lightened up our German Dark Yellow with some Vallejo White. Uh, and you can see the contrast difference that we have here. And that'll give us a good base for our wood effects later. Now here, I'm just going back in with the same airbrush mixture that we used to prime it with in the beginning. And that is the uh, uh, German Panzer Gray. And with it being really thin, it will kind of flow around the rim. Uh, and it really helps us dress up any overspray that we have here on the tires uh, that are mounted to these metal rims. And it should come out looking really nice. Now you might have to put a second coat on because it is thin, but it goes pretty quick. So next up, we're going to use this uh, Model Masters Acrylic Wood. And I've gotten wood written on my bottle because <laughs> it's rubbed off. It's so old. Uh, but we're just going to go right up to our clamps uh, there that uh, secure it to the uh, trails of the gun. And we're just going to coat all the wooden handles uh, for our tools. And this is uh, the post that the crew uses. Uh, well, it's not really a post. It's a handle that the crew uses to uh, do major uh, adjustments for traverse for the gun. And here you can see we're going to do these handles as well. Now it's not much of a color difference, but in the end uh, it, it might make a big difference. So next up uh, we're back to our German Panzer Gray. Now this is just straight out of the bottle and I'm using it uh, to paint all the metal portions of our tools and these are like the shovel spade and of course on our pick uh, the metal head on it. What I found is that uh, this Panzer Gray gives us a really nice base to come back in later on with some dry brushing and uh, do some lightening up uh, in the wear areas and it it really looks good and it's not as stark as say a NATO black or a true black. So next up we're going to be using some Tamiya acrylics here. This is XF56 which is metallic gray and we're going to be using that for areas of mechanical wear and right here we're doing the tooth engagement of the quadrant that's on the bottom of the gun for, for the gun's elevation. And also uh, on these tubes that connects our wheel ends together, the gun slides back and forth on this for really small traverse adjustments. So we're going to go ahead and paint it with uh, uh, the XF56 here. So next up we're going to use this chrome silver. Now this is a Model Master acrylic paint as well. Um, and I'm, I'm painting these uh, rods that uh, go into the elevation cylinders. And they would be chromed uh, to keep from tearing up the seals that are inside the elevation cylinders. 
and there are going to be some parts on equipment that just can't be camouflaged and this is one of them so this paint really covers well and it looks so good when it dries it's so shiny and here you can see uh, what a nice look that that really has when the light hits it and that'll really set off the model I think it's a nice detail now we're going to go to my favorite and this is flat steel this is a uh, testers enamel and we're going to paint our breech assembly here now this breech is not going to be painted because it has to move freely within the breech block and we're going to give it um, a nice coat of this flat steel we don't want it real shiny like uh, the previous rods for our elevation cylinders and I've also used this same color to paint the uh, channel that the breech block slides back and forth in. And then do a, just a little bit of dry brushing here around the entrance where the shells will be sliding in and out um, uh, of our breech block. Show some wear. And since we're dry brushing, we're going to go ahead and kind of work on our tools a little bit. And we're just going to dry brush the edges here of our pick and uh, give that a little bit of emphasis there all the sharp edges of course is going to have all the color rubbed off of it and we'll also go ahead and do the shovel while we're at it so my goal here is just to get enough pigment on there for me to work with uh, in our next step and we're just going to hit up those edges and uh, a little bit on the back side of the shovel where it's going to make contact with the ground and all the color would be kind of polished off right there. And now we can come in with a little bit of testers enamel thinner since this flat steel is an enamel. And uh, we're going to use that to blend uh, our flat steel. And also we can use it to remove uh, any excess that's on the surface. We kind of want it to look like uh, that it's been rubbed through but you know we need to kind of feather and uh, blend the edges kind of play around with it here until uh, we get the look that we really want and it's looking pretty good I'm kind of liking that <laughs> so here is the gunner site and I went ahead and painted in uh, the parts that were supposed to be black that's panzer gray that I used there and also some flat steel on the adjustment circumference of it. So now we're going to use some Tamiya XF7. This is flat red. And we're going to use that to paint our little reflector that is uh, mounted to the gun shield. And being really careful <laughs> to, to kind of paint inside the lines here. Now, I don't need to get it all the way up against the edge. Uh, we can take care of that with a little bit of panel liner later on. So next I'm going to take our Panzer Gray and add some white. So it's about 80% Panzer Gray and 20% uh, white to give us more close to a like a field gray. That's for our shells. So all of our munitions is painted this color. Now on our uh, artillery shells there is a uh, brass ring that goes around not quite all the way down on the base uh, of each shell and there's <laughs> there's just no way that I can paint that by hand. Now some of you guys out there that are really steady you can do it but uh, what I've decided to do is if I can hold on to the shell uh, I'm going to use this one millimeter uh, Tamiya mask and we're just going to uh, tape off that area and it is kind of fiddly uh, but with enough patience you can you can get it once I get it stuck in place uh, it goes pretty easy and since I intend to spray these I need to go ahead and cover up the rest of the shell I don't want any overspray of that brass um, on the rest of the munitions. Now I know it takes a little time to do this but uh, I think the end result will be justified in uh, 
uh, how our ammunition looks uh, once we get this part done. So with our shells already painted, we can go ahead and stick them in the same method that we did before uh, onto a piece of mask. And that will get us all ready. Now we also have to paint uh, all of our aft caps here, and these are the uh, powder charges. So for our paint, what we're going to do is use these uh, craft acrylic paints, and they are water-based. And uh, we're going to mix it 50-50, 50% /50, uh, 50 bronze and 50% antique gold to get us our color. Now I think that mixture is a pretty good match here for the color I was going for. And it doesn't look too bad at all. And then of course the part that uh, we're all waiting for is <laughs> to see how our mask job turned out. So all we got to do is pull off our mask tape here and take a look and see. And, and I know you've all been waiting for this. <laughs> so we'll just see uh, how good of a job we did. Hopefully we got good enough coverage. We don't have to remask everything and, and try again. And as you can see there, that looks pretty good. Uh, yeah. I know I'm spending a lot of time on ammunition, but we really need to get that looking good. So now this is Model Masters uh, Silver. And it's an acrylic as well. And we're going to use that to paint the detonators that are screwed in to the end of the artillery shells. We just, it's a very faint molded line there. And we just try to get it uh, painted up. And so we just need to do the rest of our shells with that. So this is flat yellow XF3. And that's the color that the top half of these spacers um, were, were painted up. And these spacers are used on the shorter shells uh, to keep them, I guess, from sliding back and forth inside the wooden crates. And so we're just going to go ahead and paint the ends of these uh, with that nice bright yellow. Now, as you know, with... Uh, to me, a paint, you can't brush back over it once it starts to tack up. So we need to paint that as fast as we can. <laughs> now we can turn our attention to our wooden handles again. Now this is burnt umber. This is an artist oil paint. And uh, what we're going to do is we put this on a piece of cardboard. And it's been on that piece of cardboard for a few hours. I don't know four or five <laughs> but uh, as you can see here it has soaked up a lot of that linseed oil uh, that artist oil paints have um, and we need most of that oil gone now we're going to use this testers uh, enamel thinner as a carrier for that and that'll help us uh, spread these pigments uh, of the bird umber onto the handles of our wooden tools so these are the brushes I'm going to use. Uh, one to apply, that's the blue handled one. And then the black handled one is a stencil brush uh, for stenciling paint. And it's got real thick brush uh, bristles. And uh, since they're so stiff and they're spread out, uh, that'll help us get some wood graining. So we'll take our applicator brush first and a little bit of uh, uh, enamel thinner. And we're going to kind of make it into um, really thin paint, more or less. Kind of like a slurry, I guess. Uh, not quite as thin as a filter would be. And uh, we're going to take and apply that to the wooden surfaces. Uh, so what we're actually doing here is uh, we're depositing uh, those pigments uh, onto the base coat, uh, which was the Model Master wood color. Now we're going to skip over our clamps, of course, because that would be painted the same color as the piece of equipment, in this case the, uh, the howitzer. Now we're going to do all of our wooden handles like this for our tools, but I'm just going to show you on this one piece here because it's a larger piece and it's easier 
for me to actually <laughs> capture it uh, in video so that you can see what I'm actually doing with it. And with the pigments on, we'll go ahead and let that dry. So I did kind of mess up this aspect ratio, and I apologize for that. I hope you can see what I'm doing here. So I'm using the uh, stenciling brush with the thick bristles. A little bit of thinner. We dab off most of the thinner. And we're just going to use that to drag along the, uh, the wooden surface here. And that will give us our grainy. And if we're gentle enough, but aggressive enough, I don't know, does that make any sense? <laughs> you got to kind of play with it. But we should uh, see some graining uh, in the end. And uh, you just kind of have to work with this technique a little bit. But we're going to do all of our wooden tool handles like this and uh, get those handles looking pretty good. So we're going to do the exact same thing uh, with the uh, wooden crates uh, that holds our artillery shells here. Now you can vary the thickness or the opaqueness, maybe, yeah, um, of the pigments to get a slightly different uh, color variation there for this wood on, on this particular piece or all the other pieces too. So next up, uh, with everything dry, we're going to go ahead and give it a good clear coat, uh, which we need for our next step. Now we have we have quite a few uh, decals. As you can see on these artillery shells, there's three or four. One, two, three on that one, and uh, three on the other one. And then down here, we've got some crates to do, and also on our uh, large projectile and then we got uh, some other decals to put on the gun itself and you got the gray version and the uh, uh, dark yellow version we'll, since we're doing the dark yellow we'll go with the black lettering and then if we flip through uh, our instructions here on step 25 we have some placards that go onto the back of the gun shield. That's probably range uh, quick references for the gunner since it's on the gunner's side. And then, of course, we also have a, a letter as well that we can put on the back of the gun shield. So we need to go ahead and get those done. So when it comes to these decals, if you can see it, uh, let me see if I can get the light to reflect off of it just right. They have a large clear border around it. Now the area where these placards go is quite narrow. So what we actually need to do is trim these down. So I'm going to trim it down as, as best I can, uh, getting it as close uh, to the actual printed edge as I can. And if we're real careful uh, and trim that up, then it should fit just fine. So we're going to be using Micro Set uh, and Micro Saw in this kit. And that'll help us uh, set the uh, decals and get them to adhere properly. I also have a Q-tip and a piece of paper towel as well as some water because these are uh, water activated decals and here I'm just checking to make sure that I've got plenty of room to put that decal uh, right where it's supposed to go and it is the the correct size so uh, we're gonna go with it so if you're not familiar with water slide decals uh, just place it in a little container of water and let it soak that's the way I do it um, and about 20 or 30 seconds is all it needs. Now we're going to use some micro set and just put the uh, uh, micro set in the area where the decal is going to go. And it does want to beat up on us a little bit because of the fact that we did gloss clear coat this, which really helps in the adhesion and uh, kind of helps us eliminate any silvering of the decals. And I know there are some people that don't believe in that, but I'm a firm believer in it, so that's 
kind of what I do. So here we just tested to make sure that it will slide and once it has loosened that adhesive off the paper backing we just go ahead and slide it off into place. If I can get it to slide off into place. <laughs> but, uh, I don't want to touch it too much. So I can go back and use micro set and go around the edges of it uh, just to loosen it up so that I can slide it uh, into place and get it properly aligned. Uh, you want to keep it moist around the edges uh, so that you can make adjustments. Otherwise it, it will not slide and move around where you need it to go. And now with a uh, dry Q-tip we're just going to soak away all the extra fluid here. And we're also going to roll it down in one direction. And that'll squeeze out any air bubbles that we have underneath our decal. Well, we don't want any of those because that can be a problem to fix later on. But if you do get a uh, air bubble, you can take a pin or your hobby knife and just kind of prick it in, in the center of the bubble and then uh, apply some more micro set to it and get it to lay down. So I won't subject you to the process of doing every single decal. I'll just go ahead and do all the rest of them. I chose this one placard because it's large and I thought maybe it would be easier for you to see that. So I did have to use micro saw to soften the decals and to get them to conform to our artillery shells. And then we go over it with X22 gloss clear and seal those in and that way our decals are protected. We do that right after uh, we make sure that everything's dried completely. And that will complete this phase and this part, uh, part three, of our build of our SIG33 or SIG33, if you, if you prefer to call it that. And I've taken several stills here that uh, you can enjoy while I'll ramble on. Um, about the build and the next video. As far as the kit goes, uh, this is a, an extremely detailed kit. Uh, really, really a beautiful model and I hope you can see that in, the, in these pictures. Uh, as far as our next video goes, that'll be the final, so we'll be wrapping this up and uh, doing our weathering and our final assembly on it and uh, the final reveal, so you're not going to want to miss that. Now, if you're new to the channel and you like this kind of content, and hopefully I have earned your subscription today, uh, go ahead and subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you will be able to see the next part. You won't miss that. And if you like this video, I'd appreciate it if you hit that like button. And as for all my subscribers, guys, I really appreciate you watching. It's because of you that I continue to put out these little videos. And I hope you enjoyed this one. As always, I love hearing from you. Uh, so leave me a comment in the comment section. And uh, I promise to answer you. And let me know uh, what you think of the build so far. Or whether or not you've actually built this kit. And how you enjoyed it. Or maybe you didn't enjoy it. So I'd be interested in hearing from you. That'll do it for this one, and you guys stay safe, and I will see you in the next one.